I hope you're frightened now. Guys, it's fantastic to meet you. My name is Paul J. Kim. It's a joy to be here. In high school growing up, I was your typical high schooler. I was into sports, fast food, still kind of am, music, beatboxing. One time during lunch, this guy grabbed the microphone, went up on the quad stage, and he went, <laughs> say what? And I dropped my lunch, and I was like, what? <laughs> Looked at my friend, I'm like, what is he doing with his face? He's like, bro, that's beatboxing. That's when you can't afford an iPhone. <laughs> I was like, no way, man. I have no money. I worked at Dairy Queen for like three days, and I quit. <sighs> Goals in life, OK? So it became a mission of mine to learn how to beatbox, and that was one of my things. If you were to ask me in high school, hey, um, you believe in God? Do you go to church? What? And I'd be like, Mwah. um, well, I'm Catholic, but I'm not that religious. Um, you know, uh, really, it's for two reasons that I went to church growing up, girls and donuts. Uh, I don't know what they serve after mass here in New York. <laughs> Churros, I don't know, but it was me and donuts and, um, that was my relationship. You know, my thought was this. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm Catholic, but I'm not that religious. But uh, I'm a good person, you know. Um, I never kill nobody. <laughs> I'm a good person. Um, I'm somewhere in between ISIS and Mother Teresa. <laughs> but um, uh, I'm spiritual, though, you know. Like, I feel the energy that connects me to dolphins and Oprah. <laughs> I never killed nobody. I'm a pretty good person. I didn't really subscribe to the commandments except for maybe the 11th one, which is thou shall not get caught. That, that to me was, was religion. Too many rules. Let's just narrow it down to one. That's the most important. Don't get caught. YOLO. Yo, stupid. Maybe you can relate to this story. Let's say it's a Friday night. Party of the year. You got invited. You have to ask your parents, of course, so I go up to mom and dad, I'm like, mom, can I please go to the party, please? I've been good, I didn't get expelled. <laughs> and she's like, you've been good, yes. It's eight o'clock, we're feeling very generous and we trust you. Be back by 11. <laughs> 11! So I get the keys and I drive to this party and I'm just like, yes, awesome, get to the party. It's the party of the year, the DJ's there, he's spinning music. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Every flavor of Hot Pocket imaginable. <laughs> oh my gosh! Beautiful people everywhere. You're beautiful, you're, be you're a guy, but I guess you're beautiful too. It's an amazing party. And when you're having fun, the night goes by pretty quickly. I'm checking my watch. I'm like, it's only 8.30. Night is young. But as time would have it, it's about 10.45 now. And that's about the time of the night where you should be saying to yourself, or at least your brain should be saying to yourself, hey, self, perhaps we should drive home now so as not to die. <laughs> and I'm like, Hot pocket. <laughs> you have chosen poorly. <laughs> 11 o'clock and I hear <laughs> Mom, text, where are you? I'm right here. <laughs> HGTV, anybody? I'm gonna dig my grave today. Let's make it a little bit wider. We need backsplash. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Flip that. Yeah, 11.30, 12 o'clock, and then there's more madness in my little pocket going <laughs> Ow! Burning my leg. Mom, text, all caps, where are you?
My friends are like, dude, are you okay? No. Take my hot pocket, it's delicious. Get in the car and I'm driving home like a maniac. I'm like, why do I do this to myself every weekend? Get really desperate. You know, your ability to make good decisions when you're in trouble drastically depreciates, science has shown. I'm thinking, how am I gonna ninja my way out of this one? I get so desperate, I turn off the headlights and I roll the car in neutral all the way down the street so they can't hear me coming. I'm like, like hiding behind a bush. The lights are off and I'm like, there's hope. It takes me like a half an hour to <laughs> get to my front door. <sighs> okay, I can do this, I can do this. Can do this. Keys out, okay, all right. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Why are doors only loud late at night? <laughs> but the lights are still off, there's still hope. <laughs> My room is 10 steps that way. <laughs> so close. One, two, three. <laughs> Lights are all on now. <laughs> and you look behind you. And it's the most frightening thing you've ever seen. <laughs> it's your parents. But they're not even facing you. They have their backs turned to you like on The Voice. <laughs> they don't say anything for like a minute. It's like an eternity. And after you poop yourself a little bit, church chapel to pray. <laughs> I want to make good decisions in life, and so I ask for the guidance of the Lord in the Adoration Chapel. <laughs> and they're like, <sighs> well, that was very responsible of you, honey. We're very proud of you. Go to sleep now. <laughs> I'm like, thank you. <laughs> I think I wet myself. Now, I hate to break it to you, but that will never work. But perhaps some of you, some of you whether it's a situation or another, you would think your parents got played. When in fact, what if it's you and me? What if we're the ones who got played? You see, Jesus in the gospel, he calls out this figure. He calls out this being. He says in the gospel of John, the thief, he comes to rob, kill, and destroy. Elsewhere in the gospel, he says, Satan, he's a liar and a murderer, the father of all lies. The thief, he's talking about Satan. A lot of people, when they hear this name, they're like, oh, you know, like Halloween devil, huh? He's actually a literary device. The Catholic Church made him up to scare people to go into church. <laughs> literary device. Yeah, when you meet that literary device in eternity, say hello to him. <laughs> literary device. You're making his job way too easy. Oh, yeah, Satan's not, are you kidding me? Like, uh, 
Have you seen the news for like a half an hour of your life? Do you not get the idea, even faintly, that maybe there's something wrong? Maybe there's a spiritual thing going on in the world? I have a priest of mine, a lot of you like the exorcist movies, horror films, things that spook you out. I know a priest personally who helps with exorcisms. He's seen people levitate off beds. He's seen people call out the sins of the people in the room of the exorcism who haven't gone to confession for it, like creepy. <laughs> Satan is real. And you know what? You want to make his life easier? Then fine, keep on telling yourself he's not there. Because you're making it way too easy. Like, think for a moment from his perspective. Would it make his job any better if, you know, people just knew who he was? If he jumped out of bushes, yeah, in his ugly self, and he was like, <laughs> Hello, children, you want candy? You want porn? <laughs> Be like, no, I would like to go to church right now. I would like to call my priest for confession right now. You see, he's not stupid. He's actually really intelligent. He's a master chess player. He's extremely patient. He knows you. He knows you by name. He knows your strengths. He knows your weaknesses. He knows your insecurities. He knows what you're into. He knows your group of friends. He knows where you live. <laughs> I know, it sounds creepy, doesn't it? But he will wait all eternity to trap you up and to destroy you. He wants to kill you, all jokes aside. He wants to murder you. He wants to murder everything that is good in your life. Everything that is good, true, and beautiful, he wants to destroy it. And meanwhile, he wants you to be a part of his plan to burn down everything else that is good, true, and beautiful in your world. Every relationship, every opportunity, he wants you. Yes, friends, he hates you. And he will do nothing, he will do nothing but one thing, which is to study you and to take you out. The thief comes to rob, kill, and destroy. You see, back in the very beginning, in the book of Genesis, here you have Adam and Eve. They're given a specific instructions by the Lord. You can eat from all the fruit of all the trees of the garden except one. They're like, fair deal, thanks. And what happens? You know the story. The serpent, the conniver, Satan, he slithers his way into the story. And he tricks Eve and he says, Oh, that's not what God said. You won't die if you eat that fruit. Your eyes will be open. You'll be able to think and reason like God does. Is that what you want? And she's a little bit confused, but she's like, well, yeah, actually, if that, that, that does sound pretty good. She eats of the fruit of the tree. Her husband Adam eats of the fruit of the tree. And their decision that day has historical consequences. They introduce sin into the human story. After that point, it's just a hot mess in their family. Their first children, one of them kills the other. Pain, sin, drama, destruction. All because of this one opportunity, this one temptation. You see, you might think to yourself, well, that was a long time ago, and I haven't seen the snake slithering around. But you see, it would be too easy if he did. Instead, he weaves himself so stealthily into attitudes, into music videos, into speeches, into sitcoms, into the things you read on your Facebook walls, on your Twitter feeds. Because the thing is, the devil's not so stupid that he would just throw you a fat lie. If he throws you a fat lie, you're like, no, that's stupid. But if he takes truth or beauty or goodness, and he tweaks it oh so slightly. What about a half-truth? What about a half-lie? Then it's much more digestible, isn't it? There's this thing, and I've never tried it before, but I've heard that if you take a toad, you throw a toad into boiling water, the thing will jump out for its life. But if you put a toad in lukewarm water, and you start boiling it ever so slowly, the toad will stay in the water and boil to death. I feel like with Satan, that's his tactic. He will take something that is good, true, and beautiful, and he will tweak it ever so slightly. I don't think that people are evil because God creates us good. 
But when people choose sin, because I don't think people wake up in the morning, they're like, I can't wait to commit all sorts of evil today. I don't think that's part of the human psyche or the human heart. Rather, through the connivance of the evil one, through our own brokenness, what happens is we take something that is good. We're introduced to something. Like, for instance, why does a person go and steal something? They're not thinking to themselves, I want to steal it to wreak havoc and evil in this person's life and make them super depressed because they were supposed to sell that and earn money for their family, but instead, I no, that's too complicated. Rather, when a person steals something, they're thinking, oh, I could really use that. Actually, I want that, and it's going to help me and make my life better. Why does a person have sex with their boyfriend or girlfriend when they're not married? Uh, I've been taught that I should wait till marriage, but, I mean, I really care for her. Like, we love each other. I mean, what, what's the big deal? Like, I, I really I care for her. And... Um, I mean, it's going to be fun, too, you know? Like, I'm a little bit lonely, so why not? Like, what, what's, what's the big deal? Like, it's good. God made sex, right? Like, so, yeah. It's amazing how the human mind, how the human heart was so weak when faced with a half lie, a half truth. Why does a person gossip? It's not because they want to destroy a person's reputation, make them depressed and suicidal. I don't think generally people are that messed up. Rather, I think sometimes along the line we think, well, um, I mean, I know it's messed up to, like, make fun of this person, but, like, my friends are making fun of her, so, like, if I join in, it'll give me some points with them and, like, help me feel more included, so, yeah, why not? You see, it's always these half-truths, these half-lies that lead us to compromise. Satan, the thief, he comes to rob, kill, and destroy. He comes to offer us with things, with promises that are lies. He presents temptation to us in a way where we really truly think it's limitless. It will make me so happy. It will fulfill every desire of my heart, doing A, B, or C right now, right here. And we give into it and we're sick. We're taken aback. And you know what his next step is? Then he points the finger at you and says, how dare you? You're terrible. You're ugly. You're worthless. What kind of a follower of God are you? You think he'll forgive you for that? Because that's not the first time you've done it. You promised. The thief comes to rob, kill, and destroy. For, for others of us, maybe the temptation is this because there's that still small voice in your heart saying, this is wrong, this is, I shouldn't be doing this. I've, I've really been compromising in this area. And then the, the serpent slithers nearby and he says to you, oh no, you're good. You're a good person. That's all that matters. You go to church, you say your prayers. So what? You're not hurting anybody. You're okay. Lies, deceit, murder. Here you have this fallen being, this thief, who is at odds with the good shepherd. The good shepherd who comes to give us life and life abundantly. And here he comes to literally counterfeit that and destroy us. Friends, this is heavy stuff. I'm sorry. They told me to give this talk. But there's silver lining here. The silver lining is this. If you have a heartbeat, in your chest, if you have breath in your lungs, you have an opportunity this weekend, today, to make right with God, to literally, literally break the chains of the thief in your life, to break them off, and to allow the shepherd to lead you to green pastures. That's really up to you. No one can force you, not me, not your priest, not your youth minister, no one, not your parents. You have to choose. You have the freedom. So what will it be? Because you can only serve one master. You cannot serve two masters. What will you choose? The good shepherd comes that we may have life and have life abundantly. The thief comes to rob, kill, and destroy. Friends, this weekend, we encourage you. We plead with you. We beg you. Choose wisely. Choose today who you will serve. 
God bless you.